Welcome to another Dad Built DIY Pro Ride Along. You probably know me by now. I'm a DIY guy, and you can DIY just about anything, but some projects you might not want to do yourself. For me, that was installing a French drain in my backyard. You're not going to want to miss this one. So I've been having a couple issues with drainage in my backyard, and they all have to do with how water rolls off my patio. Basically, because my patio is so large, when it rains, a lot of water comes off into the landscape beds around it. A pretty significant amount of water is pooling underneath my landscape beds and the patio itself. So I called Chris Jury from Down Under Drainage Solutions and he came out and looked at my situation and we both agreed that a French drain is what I needed. Chris is a drainage pro and not only did he do an excellent job on installing my French drain, he was kind enough to spend some time with me to share more of his knowledge. All right, I'm here with Chris Jury from Down Under Drainage and Land Management. Chris, thank you so much for yeah, coming out. Appreciate thanks for it. having me. So tell Appreciate us a little bit about what are we going to do today? Yeah, so today we're going to be installing a French drain. It's a drain where the pipe buried under the ground is perforated, meaning it has little incisions inside in, in the wall of the pipe. What that does is it allows the water that's in that area where you install it to soak through that pipe wall and once it's inside the pipe, then it runs through wherever that pipe runs until it exits. Okay. Yeah. We'll hear more from Chris in a minute, but let's get to installing this French drain. The process of installing a French drain is pretty simple. You dig a trench, you lay down some fabric, pipe, and gravel, and then you close everything up. But there are some important tips to note along the way, and Chris pointed out a bunch as he worked. We started by digging the trench along the edge of my patio where the water was rolling off, and we connected that trench to another trench that flows downhill and out beyond my fence line. You want to dig your trench about 18 to 24 inches deep and 12 inches wide. Make sure the trench slopes at least one inch for every eight feet to ensure proper drainage. For my problem, the trench needed to slope in from both sides to be deepest at the center, where the perforated pipe was going to connect to the solid pipe and flow down the yard. Chris dug this whole trench by hand, which was a lot of hard work, but it saved my yard from being torn up by a trencher. Here's a really cool pro tip. In the areas where you're putting your sod back over top of the drain, Cut the sod into 12 inch by 12 inch squares before you dig the depth of the trench. You can then puzzle piece these sod squares back on top when you're done. If there was any question about whether a French drain was the right solution for me, it was answered when the trench was dug. Take a look at how much water came pouring out from underneath my patio. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe to Dadville. I post all kinds of DIY videos for dads and I'd love it if you would join the crew. Now let's get back to work. Once the trench was done, we needed to lay down some drainage fabric. Chris used this non-woven geotextile fabric. It's a porous material that looks a lot like landscape fabric, but it's not. It's specifically designed to allow water to move through it, but to keep other dirt and debris out. You want to lay this fabric under the area where your perforated pipe is. You don't need to lay the fabric under the solid pipe areas, just where the water needs to flow through and into the drain. Here's another tip. Keep your fabric as clean as possible when you lay it down. Anything inside the fabric can clog up the perforated pipe and prevent the French drain from working as efficiently as you need it to. Now that the fabric is down, it's time to start laying our pipe. The pipe you use is important. Both the material and size matter here. For our solution, we're using 3 inch perforated drain pipe in the problem areas along the edge of the patio. And both of these pipes connect to a T before transitioning to a solid pipe flowing down the hill. The perforations in this pipe will allow water in and the slope at which the pipe is laid will allow gravity to carry the water down to the junction, and then it's gonna travel through the solid pipe out beyond the fence. 
In some situations, you might not want to remove all the water from an area. In my case, I have a landscape bed with plants, so you want your drain to be big enough to carry away the excess water, but not so big that it takes away all the water that the plants need to survive. This is why 3 inch pipe work best for our situation. Chris bought all of his material from the French Drain Man up in Michigan. I'll drop a link in the description so you can see the specialty products they sell. We connected the pipe to the fittings using this 200 year tape. It's an extra sticky and extra stretchy tape made out of PVC that makes watertight junctions and connections. Once the pipe was in place, it's time to start adding our drainage rock. In the area where we laid the non-woven geotextile fabric, we had to fill the rest of the trench up with drainage rock. A lot of rocks. The rocks create voids for water to seep through into the pipe. Remember when I said you want everything inside the drainage fabric to be clean? That includes your drainage rock. Chris had ordered washed river rock for the job, but what he got was pretty dirty. So we improvised by washing the rock in his trailer before laying it down. We used number 57 round river rock to fill the trench, and we filled it about two inches below the ground level. This is so that we had room to put mulch on top. You only need to add rocks to the perforated section of the pipe. For the solid pipe section, you don't need them. Once the drainage trench was filled with rocks, Chris folded the fabric over and used pins to close it up. It was a little bit like folding a burrito. For the solid pipe area, Chris was able to put the dirt he dug from the trench back on top, since there was no issue with that dirt getting into the drain. And with the fabric closed up and the dirt in the downward trench, we could put our mulch and our sod back on top and get everything cleaned up. And finally, it was time to test the drain. We ran a hose off the end of the patio and started pouring water directly into the drain. Let's test it out, moment of truth. All right, so we'll be running down through there. We're gonna hop over to the other side and see if we can see it coming out. We're in some thick brush country back here. Here's what it looked like on the other end. Water is flowing out and it's clean. That means the drain is working and we're not getting dirt and debris in the pipe. After everything was done and cleaned up, you could barely tell that any work had been done. You can still see the line in the sod where we cut for the downward trench, but that will grow back together in about a month's time. It was really awesome to see Chris's process and how professional the end result was. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're, we're building the airplane like well, I like it. I like it. <laughs> After the job was done, Chris hung around for a conversation about his work and to share some more tips. I'm curious, French drain, is that a DIY job? Is there a point at which your DIY job becomes, you know, calling a pro? Yeah, that's a good question because it definitely can be done, but there are a few key things that you need to consider um, for a French drain to be um, successful. Uh, one would be the right type of pipe. So having that perforated pipe is essential. There are different qualities of that pipe as well. I mean, you can buy the black ADS pipe, it's called, um, from Home Depot or Lowe's, you know, your general hardware store, basically at the lower end of the quality uh, scale, I guess. I buy all my pipe from the French Drain Man up in Michigan. So the, the pipe is the first step. Secondly, um, the right type of stone is essential. So for most French drains is number 57 round washed river stone or river rock. Um, the reason you want to use round is because when that's all sitting down in the ditch around the pipe, the stones are obviously round, right? So it creates voids mm -hmm. for the water to flow through. You don't want to be using crushed stone because it's jagged, that all kind of fits together and it doesn't have, create as big a void. If you're doing a big French drain, you want bigger stone basically, or if you're trying to move more water, you want bigger stone will create more voids within the stone and it will pass a lot more water through. Thirdly would be the fabric that you use. A lot of people think that, you know, it's just landscape fabric that we uh, roll out there um, and encapsulate our French drain with. It's not landscape fabric. Um, that's basically a woven fabric that uh, won't let 
the water penetrate through. The right type of fabric is a non-woven geotextile fabric that you want to use, but it has tiny little perforations in it, and that really lets the water penetrate through that, the wall of that fabric. So we're doing a French drain today, but I know you do other things with Down Under. Tell me about some of the other work that you do. Yeah, so, so we basically specialize in French drains, uh, underground downspouts. We also uh, offer utility trenching, augering. So if anyone needs like holes dug for a deck or a, a, a pole barn or any project like that, brush cutting, land clearing, land management, which is basically uh, you know, coming through clearing land uh, with a mulcher. So Chris, how can people get a hold of you? Yeah, so right now, um, Facebook is the best way to get a hold of me. Um, feel free to send me a direct message. So what are some of the issues that a homeowner or a DIY person would be having that suggest maybe a French drain is what they need? Yeah, so basically if you've got standing water, essentially is when a French drain would be needed. Uh, if you've got a low lying area in your yard somewhere uh, and that water after a downpour is just not draining away, um, could be days, sometimes even weeks if it's bad enough, um, that's basically the right kind of scenario for a French drain install. How did you get into drainage work? Basically, I got into this line of work because my wife and I, about five years ago, five, six years ago, bought 12 acres. And after we had the house built and we were living there and, and lived through a winter and a spring, we realized just how much water didn't drain from that land. So over the past five years, I've learned a lot about drainage and basically learned along the way a lot of YouTube videos. I love that. So you took something that like was a necessity that you had to learn this because of your situation at your house yeah. and you learned it and now you've turned it into a business. Yeah, exactly. Yep. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Did you check the batteries before? <laughs> so Chris, I want to say thank you so much for coming out. And if you're in the central Ohio area and you're looking for drainage or land management services, check out Down Under on Facebook. Chris, yep. thank you so much, man. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I appreciate Pleasure. it. Pleasure. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this pro ride along. And if you did, remember to subscribe to Dad Built DIY. I've got more DIY pro ride along content on there for you. One more thing, if you're a pro in the central Ohio area and you're looking to show a DIY guy a thing or two, hit me up. I'm looking to do more of these videos. Thanks so much for being here. I'll see you next time.